Hey everyone, it's the Johnny Gun here. Well, it's funny time, Q&A. Hooray! Hooray! The engines whistled. Silence! Thank you, Sir Tom Hat. Okay, a lot of you have written down a lot of great questions, so let's not waste any more time. Let's do this. Spider-Fan 2003, what is your favorite Thomas character? My favorite Thomas character has to be Diesel 10. Now don't get me wrong, I love Thomas, I love Percy, I love all the characters. Besides Billy, I don't like Billy. Or I'm not also a huge fan of Mary Marion. Marion, Marion, however you say her name. From Terror the Brave. I'm not a big fan of her. But I don't mind her. But um <clears throat> yeah, Diesel 10, I mean I said in my Thompson Magic Railroad review, I just love Diesel 10, I mean see me. I mean, he has a great design. Uh, Neil Cohen was a great voice for Diesel 10. And I actually have an autograph of him, uh, from him. It, it's amazing. Um, the same for Kevin Frank. Both of them are, I haven't met them, but I have autographs from them. And they're, I hear they're great people in general, so that's cool. And, um, but I mean, yeah, what can I say about Diesel 10? I mean, again, I love his design. Um, the pinchy thing just cracks me up. And it's what made Diesel, it, Pinchy is what makes Diesel 10, Diesel 10. I mean, he has a great personality. Again, his design is great. His voice is great. He He's also a villain that he's evil, but uh, he's fun evil. He's silly, but threatening. And you don't want to mess around with him. But every time he's on screen, you just can't help but love watching him. Diesel 10 is just an amazing character. And even when he got toned down in the later specials, I still loved watching him. I mean, yes, I actually enjoy him in Kong or Engines. Go ahead and shoot me, but I love Diesel 10 in Kong or Engines. I, I just do. And even his quick cameo in uh, The Great Discovery, when I saw that the first time, it made me really smile. I loved it. Um, Dave the Diesels. If the first time I saw him in Dave the Diesels, I kept rewinding that scene. I just loved it so much, and um, oh, um, uh, the the disappearing Christmas decorations. Hopefully, that's the episode. Diesel ten in an episode. That's amazing, and just that plot alone, and just the idea alone is amazing. I loved it. Every time Diesel ten is on screen, uh, Thomas movie episode, even if it's a quick cameo, even in Thomas videos on YouTube, I love watching it. Uh, watching him. Uh, Diesel 10 is just an amazing character. And I just love... I just love Diesel 10 so much. I mean, yes. He... When I was a kid, I was scared of him once in a while. But Diesel 10 is one of those characters that I love so much. Don't get me wrong. I love Thomas. I do. Thomas means so much to me. He... He's one of those few things that keeps me a child at heart. And I just love Thomas so much. The Diesel 10, I mean, there's a reason he's the best villain in Thomas and Friends. There's a reason. There's also a reason that people say he's one of the best things in the Magic Railroad. That is an accomplishment. So, yeah, what can I say? Uh, Diesel 10, my favorite Thomas character. Logan Rushford, number one. What is your favorite color? My favorite color has to be blue. Um, the main reason is because of Thomas. Yeah, uh, <laughs> what a surprise, right? Yeah, my favorite color has to be blue because of Thomas. I mean, I know I'm a critic and I review stuff, but when it comes to, like, why I like the color blue, I mean, just the color itself is bright, colorful, and it just makes me happy. There's a reason my, my room is painted blue, and, I mean, uh, a lot of my cups are painted blue, and... I'm just a huge fan of blue. I don't know why. I mean, there's other colors I like, like pink, purple, orange when Halloween comes around, uh, red and green when Christmas rolls around, and yeah. But, I mean, sorry, my ear is itchy. But yeah, I mean, blue. It's just my favorite color. I can't explain why. Well, actually, I just did. But, excuse me. I mean... There's not much to say about it. I just like the color blue. It's... Excuse me. It's just my favorite color. I really like it. Number two. Favorite movie you've seen this year? Um, I've seen a lot of great movies this year. Um, 
the first, uh, not the first, uh, Halloween 2018. I loved that. First time seeing a horror movie in theaters. It meant a lot to me. I loved it. Um, uh, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Yes, I liked that. Sue me. It was a good movie. Um, there's just so many great movies I've seen this year. But my favorite one is a movie I actually saw with my friends. Um, I won't say their names just for private reasons if they already have YouTube channels. But, um, that movie was Ready Player One. Uh, when I saw that trailer, I knew I had to see this movie in the theater. And, uh, my friends and I planned on seeing it. We saw it. One of the best movie experiences I had since How to Train Your Dragon 2. Uh, just, no, since Milo Pony the movie, my bad. But yeah, I mean, what a great movie. It's one of those few movies that, even when I really have to use the bathroom, I just don't because I don't want to miss a single second of it. It's how good of a movie it was. I mean, all the uh, references, the story itself. This is one of those few good video game movies, and I loved it. Um, a lot of moments... Moments. A lot of moments made me uh, drop my jaw. I smiled a lot. I'm a huge fan of the Iron Giant, and when I saw the Iron Giant for the first time, I literally shed a tear because the Iron Giant's one of my favorite movies. It's not the favorite movie, but it's in my top 10, top 20. It's a movie I love, and seeing the Iron Giant, it was amazing. Oh, also seeing the uh, one of the Gremlins in the fight in the um. Ending fight, that was amazing. Seeing Sonic, um, uh, Doc Brown, uh, Back to the Future music, The DeLorean. It's one of those movies I love. And I had so much fun seeing it in the movie theater. And I really love watching it. And I don't know if they will, but if they do a sequel, I'm all up for it. And Steven Spielberg was the perfect uh, man to direct this movie. It, just like... Um, uh, Jurassic Park and other movies he's done. He made this movie magical and it was wonderful and I loved it and I definitely look forward to watching it more in the future. I saw a lot of great movies this year, but Ready Player One, yeah, that was my favorite. Number three, favorite video game of all time? That's really hard to say because there's a lot of video games I love. Uh, I love the first Disney Infinity, one of my favorite games. Uh, it's, besides GTA V, it was one of those few games I've spent countless hours, hours, hours. I had to get a new copy of the game because I played so much of it that I had so much fun playing it, and I still do. Um, I'm actually do, working on a review of it right now, so that's cool. Um, but while it is a nostalgic game for me, I'm going to have to say Scooby-Doo Night of a Hundred Frights. When I was a kid, there was not many video games I played. There were only... Five? There was Simpsons Hen Run, Simpsons Road Rage. Um... Let's see... <sighs> Cards of the Video Game. GTA... Uh... Vice City. Yes, I played that at a really young age. Uh... My parents weren't bad parents. They just decided to let me play at a young age. And I wasn't really young, I was like six. And it's one of the more kid friendly of the GTAs, so that's alright. If you guys know what I mean by that, if not, I can't really explain, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I also played, um, I think it was also a Finding Nemo I played a lot as a kid. And then there was Scooby Dude Night of a Hundred Frights. Um, there's a lot of games I put a lot of hours to. There's a lot of games I've beaten over and over. Scooby Dude Night of a Hundred Frights was one of those games I I still play today constantly. I know that I don't know the game 100, percent but like where everything is 100, percent but to beat the game, I know it by heart. I can beat the game in a whole day, which I've done at least once, maybe twice. Uh, it's a game I go back to all the time. I have two copies of it. One of it being my brother's, but he let me keep it. So, thank you for that, bro. Um, 
yeah, I, I, it's a game still today. I I played a lot as a kid. I played it a lot today. And it's one of those few, I think it was the first platformer game I not only really played, besides maybe Sonic 2 on the Genesis years and years ago, and Mario, Super Mario World, but it was the first um, platformer I ever beaten on my own. And it's Scooby-Doo. I love Scooby-Doo. So, yeah, Scooby-Doo Night of 100 Fights. It's one of my... It's my favorite game of all time. It's a really good story, a good story adapted to a to video game. And it was meant to, it was a game that was released while the movie was being made. So it was kind of like a tie-in game. Kind of funny how the game was better than the movie. I still enjoy the movie, even if it's bad-ish. Um, just the soundtrack is great. Um, excuse me, the sound effects stick out to me. And it's just a game I love. If you're a kid and you really and you want to get into video games, especially platformers, try Scooby Doo Night of Hundred Frights. It's tricky, but it's for kids, so it's easy to get the hang of, and it's just one of those good kid friendly games that I think will be really good to teach kids on doing platformers, that or Sonic Two. But yeah, Scooby Doo Night of Hundred Frights. I just love that game so much, and. Uh, I hope to do a Let's Play out on my channel in the future. So yeah, I love the game so much. It's I love a lot of games in my life, but Scooby Doo Night Scooby Doo Night of a Hundred Frights. It's my favorite game of all time. Number four, first movie you ever saw in theaters. Um, that would be my favorite Christmas movie, The Polar Express. Now say what you will about the movie. You either love it, or you hate it, or you think it's okay, or you just think it's meh. To be honest, I love it. I can understand the flaws about some of the animation being iffy and a little creepy, but I love the movie. I love the animation, I love the music, and being a huge fan of trains, I mean, I'm, an, I'm a grown adult, and I still love Thomas and Friends, so I love trains, uh, uh, obviously. To me. So yeah, on the Polar Express, I just love the movie. Again, the music is beautiful. Uh, the animation I love, even if it's creepy a lot of times. The voice acting is really good. Um, it's just one of those Christmas movies that... How do I say it? It's still magical. A lot of Christmas movies I watch are still magical. But seeing this movie in the theater, not only being a Christmas movie, but the first movie I myself saw in theaters, it it was really magical, and I just love it. But my parent, I remember my parents saying that one one of the favorite moments in the movie theater was watching me react to the movie. So that was that's a really good family moment, and it's just a movie I love so much. A lot of my friends and family really enjoy it. <laughs> the conductor actually looks like my uncle, which is actually kind of funny. But yeah, the Polar Express. I mean. I love going to the movies, and there's so many movies I love seeing in, in theaters, but The Polar Express, it's only my favorite Christmas movie, but it's the first movie I saw in theaters, and it means so much to me, so, yeah, The Polar Express, I love it. Number five, how old you were when you started YouTube? Uh, well, I'm 19 right now, and I started my channel back on 2016 on January 7th, so I was 17 at the time. Yeah, I was about 17 at the time. I still didn't know much about you. I knew a lot about YouTube, but I didn't know much about video making and stuff. And uh, yeah, as as time went on, I got better at making videos, better at, you know, filming and being a good YouTuber. And over the past um, few years, I, I guess I should say I've been doing this for three years. But I started in the... My channel was during the winter time, but I started making videos in uh, the summertime. So I guess for the past two and a half years, maybe three years now, I guess, um, I've made so many videos that I'm proud of to to so much. I it's hard to believe I've you know I've actually been able to do this. So yeah, it's amazing. I love it. I've met a lot of wonderful people. Well, I, I'm not actually met, but I've talked to them in the comment section. I've made some friends. Uh, Mr. Bluebell Engine, a uh, Cool Guy 216 2.0, a Spider Fan 2003, and so many other wonderful people. You know, I've talked to them in the comments, and they're in videos. 
I've watched the videos, they're really cool, and a lot of them have inspired me. Uh, uh, Mr. Bluebird Engine, I recently watched uh, his uh, uh, Train Tales video, End of the Line. Not only a great story, but a great video itself, and it's inspired me to make really cool stories like that. So, thank you for that, Mr. Bluebird Engine. And, um, yeah, just a lot of wonderful people uh, have inspired me, and uh, it just... It's really cool to make videos and just have fun with it, and it's kind of hard to believe I've been doing this for almost three years now. So, yeah, it's amazing, and I love it. So, uh, yeah, I've been... So, yeah, I was uh, 17 when I started this, and I'm really proud of how far I've come. Number six. What made you want to become a YouTuber? Um, well, for certain things I do, it depends. For reviews, it was the Nostalgia Critic, um... The angry video game nerd. Nowadays, well, still today, it's the nerd and the critic. But also, when it comes to g gaming reviews, that you know, isn't just being of the nerd, like not just angry video game nerd. Uh, some call me Johnny, Cataclysm. Um, even some of my friends have inspired me, like Sonic Fan sixty six. Uh, some of the skits are so funny, and it gets me wanting to do stuff like that in the future. And that's why the beginning of my Sonic Generations uh, review had like a 10 minute skip because I just had so much fun doing it, so yeah. Um, uh, also draw Scorch, uh, when it comes to My Little Pony reviews, um, so many, uh, back then it used to be Toon Critic Y2K, but after the incident, what happened with him, I, I left, I took him, no, nah, I shouldn't say I took him, I just, uh, what's the word? Well, after the incident of what happened with him, I just forgot about him, and um, while I while I really met, wish I met the guy, after what I heard what happened, you know, with, uh, after the incident, or incidents, I guess I should say, I'm really happy I didn't, so, yeah. But yeah, a Toon Quick back then, he inspired me, uh, but nowadays, um, Josh Scorcher inspires me. Uh, Dr. Wolf, Silver Quill, Lightning Bliss, um, oh, so many wonderful Brony YouTubers, uh, Finn the Pony, um, uh, some of Elior's reviews, Golden Fox, Keyframe, uh, Mad Munchkin, uh, so many wonderful Brony reviewers have inspired me to make, uh, reviews, and, uh, um, yeah, the, the, I hear the wonderful people when I watch them on YouTube and some of the vlogs, and yeah, they just seem like wonderful people, so, uh, which I, I'm, I'm, I know they are, so, but yeah, um, a lot of them have inspired me to make Milo Pony reviews, which I will be doing more of, I promise you that. Um, some people have inspired me to do, uh, reaction videos, like, uh, Renegades React, uh, Apple Geek, uh, Blank Check, if I said his name right, he's a bunny, brony YouTuber, sorry if I said your name wrong, dude. Um, but yeah, they have inspired me to do, uh, reaction videos, which I've done a few, but again, my ed one of my editing softwares isn't working, and I cannot do editing, uh, reaction videos on Windows Movie Maker, because it's Windows Movie Maker, so I have to wait to edit those in the future. But yeah, uh, besides that, when it comes to Thomas videos, um, well, he's, well, both of them are in the Brony fandom. But um, back then, they were known as Miss Oliver Blossom, which is the DeWilstonator, as he's known now. And Train Lover 47? Hopefully I said his name right. That was, that, I, that was Joey, I think that was Joey Turner? Or, uh, I I don't know, what it, I know, um, I'm trying to get him mixed up, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> I just had a mind about it. I know, um, that, I know the DeWilson is old Thomas channel, but I don't know if Train Level 4, 6, 7, if, I'm totally wrong, mixing up the name, name, I'm sorry. I don't know if that was his Thomas channel, if it was someone else's, but I know Jasper Pie, or Joey Turner, as some of you know him as. Um, I grew up with a lot of their videos. Uh, they were the first ones that inspired me to make Thomas videos. I actually remember when I was a kid, I used to, uh, Especially uh, Jasper Pie, I actually remember, or uh, Joey Turner, I should say, Jasper Pie is his brony name, I think, I'm totally wrong, I, I'm sorry. Um, uh, 
uh, for Joey Turner, I, when I used to watch his Thomas videos, I actually loved them so much. I used to recreate them with uh, my trains and I would record it. I don't have any of that footage, sadly. But yeah, uh, uh, ja uh, Joey Turner inspired me a lot. Uh, Miss Oliver and Blossom, aka the Dwellsonator, uh, he inspired me a lot. Um, I think. Uh, I think uh, the Wilson A was the first Thomas YouTube I ever watched. Either that or Leo Kim videos, uh, Thomas Mad Bomber video, one of those. So, yeah, um, a, a lot of them have inspired me. Um, Thomas Wynn Wearway, of course. Uh, Enterprise and Engine. Uh, Mr. NPS. Um, yeah, he inspired me. Um, there, there's just so many Thomas YouTubers. It's hard to keep track of. Um, let's see me. Uh, Mr. Blue Engine, he's inspired me a little bit. So it's Cool Guy 216 2.0. And so has Spider Man, Spider, uh, Spider Fan 2003. He inspired me a little bit. And uh, yeah, there's just so many YouTubers that have inspired me to do certain things, either it being Thomas, reviews, My Little Pony reviews, reactions, and so on. And there's some reviews that still that still inspire me today, and like for other re for other things as well, like singing, animation, art, and so on. And um, yeah, it's there's so many people that inspire me to make videos, and because they inspired me a lot to make videos, I wanted you know to do that myself, and I finally made my channel back in 2016. And uh, a lot of the Thomas videos I actually made, I made a few years ago. Like uh, like three years before that my channel started, and I finally edited them. I uploaded them, and I am really proud of them. And uh, as I, as time went on, I got better with my reviews, mostly kind of. I've definitely gotten better with my Thomas videos. I've learned how to edit better, Photoshop, green screen. Uh, I'm really proud of how far I've come. So, yeah, a lot of people have inspired me, and I cannot thank them enough. So. Yeah, um, because of them, I'm where I am today, so, yeah, uh, that, those are the people who have inspired me to be a YouTuber. Mr. Bluebo Engine, number one, what's your top three favorite seasons of Thomas and Friends? Uh, that have to be season five, season six, and season three. Uh, with season five, I mean, a lot of people say it's their favorite Thomas and Friends season, and there's no doubt about it, I mean... What is there to say about season 5 that hasn't been said already? Alec Baldwin's narration, uh, his great character voices, I mean, I love his voice for Gordon. Some people may say it's a little too deep, uh, I think I've heard some people say his voice is retarded. Like, like, Gordon, his voice that he did for Gordon? I don't think so, I think his Gordon voice is great! I mean, I love his Gordon voice, his Toad voice is great, uh, his James voice. I like his James voice. His voice for Cranky. Uh, oh, so many, so many good voices he does. His voice for Bill and Ben. That's some of his best voices. I love it. Um, uh, let's see. Um, uh, stories that weren't based on the Railway series. Uh, first season being full without any of those episodes. I mean, that's really cool. It, it really is. Um, and some and there's a lot of great episodes. I mean, Cranky Bugs, one of the best ways to start one of the Thomas seasons. Uh, also, Cranky the Crane, a great character. He, I love Cranky. Um, uh, Horde Lois, I love that episode. Um, oh, there's so many other episodes. I can't remember. Uh, I think uh, something in the air was in that season. Uh, hopefully, I'm right. Um, Thomas and the Rumors and. So many great uh, episodes of that season, and the crashes were great. Um, uh, also, it was one of the, I don't know if it was season 5 or season 4, but I remember season 5 had a lot of spooky episodes. Haunted Henry, um, uh, Don't Get Spooked. That episode still creeps me today, especially with that music. Oh, jeez, that music. Um... Yeah, season five. What can I say that hasn't been said about it? I love it. It's a great season. Um, season six. Yes, I. This is one of the. This is the last season that was 
produced by the Bird Outcroft Company, the actor, uh, uh, Entertainment by Thomas. And, um, I can understand why some people don't like it, but season six was a big part of my childhood. Um, Percy's Chocolate Crunch, love that episode. Um, most of the episodes in Thomas' uh, Snowy Surprise, the DVD, um, a lot of those episodes are in that season alone, and I love those episodes. I mean, Alec Baldwin's voice isn't as good as season five, but I still enjoy it. Um, the, even some of the bad episodes I enjoy. It's bad, but I, I like Middle Engine. It's a good episode. Again, Percy's Chocolate Crunch. Love that episode so much. Um, again, the winter episode, so good. Um, oh, jeez. Uh, Thomas and the Jet Engine. That's my favorite Thomas episode in that season. I not just in season, but in general. That's my favorite Thomas ep that's my favorite Thomas episode, period. I love it. It's oh I, I love that. And a lot of great characters came in that season too. I think that was also the season where we had Emily. I'm please correct me if I'm wrong. Um Emily, Harvey, Spencer, maybe that was season seven. But a lot of great characters came from uh, Season 6. Salty, Salty was a great character. I can understand why a lot of people don't like Season 5, five season, season 6, but Season 6 was a big part of my childhood. and I remember watching a lot of episodes from Season 6, so yeah, I love Season 6. No matter what people say, I love okay, it. Okay, back on track. Um, uh, my last season would have to be Season 3. Now, season three, um, the reason, uh, again, it was a big part of my childhood. I don't, I remember watching season one and two, but three, I think I watched the most. I mean, uh, season three was not only a beautiful season, but I mean, like, there were a lot of great stories. I mean, Trust Thomas, James Goes Buzz Buzz, um, oh, what else, what else, what else, what else, uh, Hmm. See, I'm trying to think of so many good episodes. Um, my mind's blanking. It's kind of funny. Normally, I remember episodes from season. Oh, Henry's Force. That was a good episode. Uh, yeah, I just really like season three. It's a season I watched a lot as a kid, more than season one and two. And again, beautiful music, great, the great visual visuals. It's just, it's just um. It's just the season I really enjoyed. I can understand why some people prefer season one and two, but I really like season three. That was one of my favorite seasons. I mean, it is still one of my favorite seasons. I I have it on DVD, actually. The same for one and two. I don't have any other ones yet, though, which I need to get eventually. Uh, but yes, um, season five, six, and three. Those are my favorite Thomas seasons. So, yeah. Number two. What are your top five favorite Thomas and Friends movies? Thomas and Friends movies. Hmm. I'm gonna have to say, number one, obviously, Thomas and the Magic Railroad. I mean, I've said it in my review, and I'm gonna say it again for every single time I bring it up. It's a movie I love. I watched, I actually watched it more than a television series, I kid you not. I, I know, it's one of those few movies... No, I take it back. It's the only movie I know in my in my heart. Like la every single line, every single shot, ninety eight, no, ninety percent, most of the music, I can hum it. Um, I I can say like if you were to ask me what was Thomas's third sentence, third word he said in the in the movie, I could I would have to think about it, but I could tell you like that. I I love the movie so much. I love the music. I enjoy the story. I'm one of the few people who actually can understand the story because I've seen it so much. I kid you not. Um, actually, even as a kid, I I actually understood it quite well. I don't know why. I know a lot of people had a hard time with it when they were younger. So, But yeah, the music, the story, uh, the green screen, even if it's still a uh, simple green screen, I still think it holds up today. I love it. I really enjoy the voice cast. Perfect voice for Thomas. I love it. I'm, I kind of like the voices for James and Percy. 
mostly Percy and James. I still enjoy James's voice, but yeah, it's not great. It's not good. It's just meh. But yeah, I like a lot of the voices for the characters. A lot of people didn't, but I really do. I really, really do. Um, Kevin James has a great voice for Henry. Perfect uh, voice for Henry. Um, let's see, uh, again, New Chromis, Diesel 10, Great Villain, a Splatter and Dot. Really wish they came back in the later seasons. I love Splatter and Dot. They're great. Um, yeah, what else can I say? I love the movie. And I, I do enjoy the human characters. I mean, I won't watch all the human scenes, but there's a few I do enjoy. I like Baldwin's having a great time, you can tell that for sure. And Ma Wilson, Peter Fonda, they do a great job for what they're given for the script, so. Yeah, I, I enjoy the movie. Um, the next movie is Colin of Engines. Yes, say what you will about the movie. It's... It's bad, but I enjoy the movie. I, I watched a lot of the movie when I was a kid, and I still remember a lot of it quite well. It was one of the first video games I ever owned. They actually made a video game for the Leapster, if anyone remembers that. Um, I, I like the story. I enjoy the characters. <clears throat> Excuse me. I enjoy Diesel 10 in that movie. And yeah, I, it's a bad movie, but I love it. The songs are great. I love the songs. I enjoy the message. Yeah, there's flaws with the movie, but I do really enjoy it. It's I do enjoy the movie. Um, let's see what else. Um, I'm gonna have to say. Uh, I'm gonna have to say, uh, my third movie would have to be, uh, uh, Hero of the Rails. I enjoyed Hero of the Rails. Dougal Thomas, really good song. Um, the story was good. I liked the character of Hero. Spencer as the villain. That was a nice change for once. First movie of Thomas and Friends in CGI. Yeah, the CGI doesn't hold up as well. It looks like a cutscene you would see in a PS3 game. But... Yeah, I I enjoyed Hero of the Rails. I, I liked the movie. Um let's see what else. I'm trying to think of what else. Tell me Tom. Um The Great Race. I I enjoyed the Great Race. Granted the movie should have been called the Great Railway Show. Because the great race doesn't really have to do much with the movie at all. But I enjoyed the movie. Uh, first Thomas the Musical, that was really good. Um, I really enjoyed the songs in that. Uh, I enjoyed the story. I really liked the new characters. Ashima was nice. Didn't like Vinny. I mean, just a normal generic bully. Didn't like Vinny. But again, I really liked Ashima. The story was really good. The message was good. And I kid you not, if this movie ended the Thomas series, like the way how the movie ends, like le like the message is so good that you know Thomas learns that it you, it's good to be you. Don't you don't need to be anyone else. That's a great message. If this movie ended the Thomas series, I'd be fine with that. I I really enjoyed it that much. And yeah, I enjoyed that. The, my fifth movie would have to be. Um, so many great Thomas movies, but I'm gonna have to say uh, Journey Beyond Sodor. Uh, first Thomas movie in a long time to go over an hour, or at least above an hour. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoy it. I really like the story. The story was good. Uh, the new characters I got, uh, I got messed up. The new characters are really good. I'm not a big fan of songs, but they're okay. Um, some of the flaws I do have in the movie, like, yes, the bouncing around. Why did they do that? Uh, well, I forget what that crane's name is. But, yeah, he was pointless. Didn't need him in the movie. Hurricane and, uh, 
cranky. They were good characters. Also, this movie, I was actually really disturbed by it at points. Like, when they held, held Thomas captive, I had to pause the movie because I felt really disturbed. And, uh, yeah, this, I'm surprised this movie was not rated PG. Because I, I, when I saw this movie back in 2017, I was actually pretty disturbed by this movie. So, yeah, it's, it is something. Yeah. I can understand why a lot of people don't like it, but I do enjoy it. It's a movie I do like. And, um, yeah, I, I, would, I would, that's, uh, those are my top five uh, favorite Thomas movies. I mean, there's a lot of Thomas movies I do like, like, I enjoy The Great Discovery. I do like The Adventure Begins. Uh, uh, let's see what else. I do like, um, Soto's Legend of the Lost Treasure, A Blue Man Mystery, Day of the Deeds, or so many other ones. I enjoy them, but they're not as good as the other one, as these ones, in my opinion. I mean, Ginny Brown, I mean, Star Wars Legend of the Last Treasure, really good movie. Uh, Thomas and Friends, The Adventure Begins, great tribute to the series. I love it. Even if I do wish there was a little more original content, I still really liked it. But the but these five movies are my favorite, and I do really enjoy them. I, I enjoy all the Thomas movies, but yeah, these ones are my favorite. Number three, what video are you most proud of? Now, that's a hard question to answer. Because, in general, excuse me, it's, it's really hard to say, because it depends. When it comes to my reviews, probably Sonic Generations. When it comes to, um, my Thomas videos, that's really hard to say. Because, I mean, I'm proud of so much of them. I love my green screen test, uh, the chase scene of the Magic Beard, that, uh, the original, not the director's cut, the uh, one from the police cut of the movie. That one's my most viewed video. I really, I don't, I, I'm proud of that one, but I don't think it's that great, but I am proud of it. I'd have to say, though, I'm proud of, I'm most proud of two videos, and those would be, uh, he's a really useful engine and the meeting from the Magic Railroad. The video show engine one was the first video I ever edited. Like, not on my own, but like, first video I ever edited, period. I'm really proud of that one. I remember when I first heard those few words, Diesel was in a dump, but the steam engines were still right on track. I started crying in tears, of joy, of course. Seeing that I could remake uh, these Thomas videos, I mean, these Thomas scenes with my own trains made me so happy, and I was so excited to do it. And one of my friends helped me with that, and I won't say their name for personal reasons, but yeah, uh, a big thanks to him for helping with with that. And yeah, I just really enjoyed. Uh, I, I'm really proud of that one. Um, the second one is the meeting, uh, which came out after uh, the Mad. Uh, he's really useful engine. No, wait, that came before, uh, uploading-wise. Um, that was the first Thomas video I ever edited on my own with no help. And uh, I am really proud of that one. Granted, uh, some scenes I cut a little too early, and I noticed that when uh, I upload the video, but hey, uh, it happens. But it's taught me a lot of stuff about editing in the future. So, yeah, it's, it's one I'm really, really proud of. So... Yeah, those are the two Thomas videos, or just the two videos in general, I'm proud of. I can't say which one I'm more proud of, because I'm both proud of them equally. If I had to choose, though, I'd say he's a really useful engine. That one is just one of my favorite Thomas videos I've made, but one of my favorite videos I've made, period. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very proud of that one. The Mashed Potato Dude. Number one, is there any video game franchise you would like to play or get into? Um, well, I want to try Metal Gear Solid, like, there's a lot of games I want to try from back in the day. Street Fighter, Metal Gear Solid, Resident Evil, Silent Hill, um, there's a lot of games I really want to try and get into. Um, hmm, I'm trying to think of any other one. I want to try Big Rigs. I really want to see if it's bad as people say it is. Superman 64, I want to try that one day just because. Uh, 
yeah, those are just a few examples. I want to try some Sega Genesis games. I want to try Knuckles Chaotix. That that looks fun. Um, I I've never tried virtual reality. I really want to try virtual reality one day. And after watching Ready Player One, I really want to try that. So, um, I kind of want to try a few new scary games. I'm not a horror guy, but I love Five Nights at Freddy's. So I really want to try some scary games like uh, The Evil Within. I really want to try that. Uh, I maybe want to try a few new Telltale games. Like some of the games from back in the day like Bone or Game of Thrones, even if I don't like Game of Thrones. Um, yeah, those are just some examples. So, yeah, those are some gaming franchises I like to get into. Number two. What other gaming franchises do you dislike besides Pokemon, Minecraft, and Fortnite? Yes, uh, I am not a fan of Pokemon, Minecraft, or Fortnite. I'm just going to say right now. I can understand why Fortnite's popular, but I think it's too overrated. Minecraft, I just prefer Disney Infinity. The game's nice, it's beautiful, and the music is great. But I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of Minecraft. I'll try more of it in the future, because I want to review it in the future. But yeah, I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of Minecraft. Pokemon, I'm saying this right now. It's too overrated. I, I find it a waste of money. Like, the games... I understand, but, oops, oops, I, I pressed the button, um, yeah, but, uh, Pokemon, I like Pikachu, that's it, if I got a Pikachu t-shirt or plushie, awesome, but I am not a fan of Pokemon, uh, I, I understand why people like the games, but I think the cards are just a cash grab, and, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I do not like Pokemon. If you do, good for you. I'm glad you... Excuse me. I'm glad you can enjoy something that I don't. But I'm sorry. I'm not a fan of Pokemon. But besides those, any gaming franchise I do not like. Um... Uh, well, while it's not a series, I can name some games I do not like. I do not like Sonic Riders. I am sorry. I have the Kinect version. I actually, I have all three games. No, I only have two. Sorry. I have Zero Gravity and I have Free Riders on the Kinect. In my opinion, Free Riders is the real Sonic 06 because I actually get enjoyment from Sonic 06. Free Riders is a terrible game. I enjoy it, but I don't like it. I'm sorry. I know I said I enjoy it, but. I tried some of it in the past with my cousin. We had fun. I'm surprised I still have the game, though. Uh, I'm a huge Sonic fan, so of course I'm going to keep it. Um, Zero Gravity. I hate it. Okay, I shouldn't say I hate it. But it's a... Sonic Riders, it's one of those few games that I want to try, and I have. And I really want to get good at it, because I love racing games. I love cars. I love... I, I enjoy Mario Kart. I kind of enjoy the Crash Bandicoot racing games, but Free Zero Gravity, it's a good game. I like it, but I'm just not a huge fan of it. I, I want to try more of it, and I will, but every time I try to, I just get, I, because I can't get good with the controls, and I have to remember all of it, it just really gets on my nerves, and it's just not a, I, it's a good game, like structurally, and physically, but it's just not, it's a really tricky game for me to get into. I love Sonic, and I'm so happy that my friend Jeffrey gave it to me. Hey, Jeffrey, if you're watching this, dude, thank you so much. I, I'm so thankful for the game, really I am. And I will definitely play more of it in the future, but right now, it's a game I enjoy. But it's a game that I also kind of really gets on my nerves. I enjoy it, but at the same time, I kind of don't. So, yeah, it's, I'm happy with the game. I'm going to keep it forever until the day I die. But it's a game that can really get on my nerves at times. Um, any other games I don't... Uh, Sonic 1. I love the Sonic the Hedgehog games. 
but I think Sonic 1 is too overrated. So also Sonic 3 and Knuckles. The only good classic Sonic game I like is Sonic 2 and Mania. And CD, kind of. I've only played a level or two of it. I'm sorry, I... Sonic 1, I love Green Hill Zone, and I like the game in general. But at times, it can get... They advertise the game as going fast, not much platforming. There's more platforming than speed. And there's really times when the game can really get on my nerves. I'd rather play Sonic 1 than Sonic 3 and Knuckles, because I try to play Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I like it, but... I just think it's too overrated. Both of those two games, I mean, I can understand why people like them, but I just, I'm just not a big fan of them. I'm sorry. I, I'm just not a huge fan of them. I'll play more of them in the future because I want to try and like them. But yeah, I'm sorry. Sonic 3 and Knuckles, not a big fan. Sonic 1, it's a good game, but yeah, it's kind of advertised wrong. Um, I know I, I'm not trying to... I know this game, I can't think of any gimmick franchises I don't like, so I'm just thinking of games I don't like. I'm not a big fan of the FNAF sequels. Now let me just say right now, I love the FNAF series in general. I enjoy the sequels, but at the same time, there's just a charm about the first game I love. And when I watch the second game and the third and fourth, I enjoy it, but I just don't get the same charm as the first game. I don't know why, I just don't. But I do enjoy them, but I just have a I just have a more special connection with the first game. So yeah. Besides that, um Uh the last game I'll say is Finding Name with a Video Game. It was the first video game I ever got. It terrified the heck out of me. Finding Nemo was one of my favorite movies as a kid, and I still love it today. The game terrified me. The enemy scared me. The uh, the submarine level scared the crud out of me. I got it took me till I got the game the year it came out, and it took me till 2011 to beat it. So thanks to one of my brother's friends. So yeah, it was. It's one of those games that I wasn't a big fan of. Would I buy it again nowadays? Probably yes. As a kid though, I hated it. So. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I know they're not gaming franchises, I'm sorry, but it's just one of the few, I just thought of games I could, didn't like, so, uh, sorry Mashed Potato Man, it's, I'm sorry. Number three, what is your next game review? My next review is going to be Spongebob Atlanta Square Panthers. It's a short game, and I know it by heart, so it's going to be easier for me to do. Also, uh, I'm working on a script right now. Uh, my friend Sonic Fan 66 is gonna help me with some of it, so that's awesome. Um, besides that, I'm also doing a review of Disney Infinity that'll be coming out sometime soon. Um, yeah, I don't know what else much to say. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, not Spider-Man. Uh, SpongeBob and Atlantis Square Panthers. I was gonna do Battle for the Bikini Bottom, but um, I was worried I wouldn't be able to finish that review in time. So I'm going to save that review for next year. So I'm doing Atlantis Grill Panthers. So again, it's a game I love to my heart, even if it's not a perfect game, but I do enjoy it. And uh, I'm definitely looking forward to reviewing it. So yeah, that's going to be my next game review. Sonic Fan 66. Number one, would you join my Splatoon religion? I think Dr. Eve was said in the best way. How about new, you crazy Dutch b I couldn't agree more, Doctor. Now, I'm just, just saying, jokes aside, I'm not, a fan, I'm not a fan of Splatoon. I should have also said that. I'm not a fan of Splatoon. And if you like the game, good. I'm just not a fan of it. And I do not, I'm not religious, I'm not Christian, or anything like that. So, no. I will not join a Splatoon religion. Also, Gabe, I know you're not Dutch, but knowing you do, you can enjoy a good joke. So, yeah. Sorry, dude. I'm not joining your Splatoon religion. Number two. What is your favorite food? I have a lot of favorite foods. But my favorite food would have to be nachos. Back in the day, it was tacos. 
But nowadays, it's nachos. Uh, just the crunchiness of the chip, the melted cheese, the beef or chicken or whatever you put on it, the sour cream. It's delicious. I love it. Every time I go to a restaurant, I always get nachos. My family sometimes teases me and says, I'm surprised I haven't become a nacho. And yeah, I'm going to be honest. I'm, I agree with them. I, I've eaten nachos so much in my life, I've kind of gotten tired of them, but I still enjoy them. Uh, but it's not just that. I love pizza. I love pasta, like Kraft Dinner, Ligrini Alfredo, or Ligrini Tetuzzini, however you say it. Um, poutine, I, it's a Canadian thing, thing. I love poutine, I, I love it. Or patin, as I said. I, I really enjoy that. Um, yeah, th those are just some, those are just some food I like. But yeah, uh, nachos. Love them. Also mashed potatoes and gravy. Love them as well. But mostly nachos. I love my nachos. Number three. Why did you start YouTube? Um, this is the same, it's kind of the same question in a way as with my, as what uh, Logan asked. Um, a lot of people inspired me and uh, I really wanted to try videos out and just have fun and see what I could do. And just seeing how far I've come and that I'm not stopping anytime soon. I want to see how more creative I can be. I want to create stories, have fun and just enjoy what I do and I already have a lot of videos planned for the future. I have some movies, yes, movies planned for the future. So that's going to be really fun to do. So yeah, um, a lot of people have inspired me and uh, that's why I started YouTube. A lot of people inspired me. I want to make videos. I'm so happy with what I'm doing. So and I want to make this into a job in the future. So yeah, that's, um, yeah, that's why I started YouTube because I love doing it. Also, because I like to make people happy. One of my favorite things to do in my life is making people happy. If I can make someone smile or chuckle, then I know I did my job. That's why I always say, I'm Stitch Underground. I review and I entertain you because I love doing reviews even if I don't know much of them, which I'm going to start doing more in the future. But also, I love entertaining people. I love making people happy. It's just something I enjoy doing. So yeah, I love making videos for fun of it, and I love making people happy. So yeah, see me. That's why I started YouTube. Number four, why did you get into filming in general? Again, it's kind of the same thing. But filming, well, um, I, when I was younger, I used to have a little tights camera, and I loved filming with my Thomas trains. I, I would create my own stories. I would just, I would recreate stories from the TV show. And it was just something I really enjoyed. Also, I could watch them on the, on the road when I went traveling. Or if I just went to see my family, so. But also, I mean, again, just on YouTube, I wanted to get a camera. And I just had fun enjoying it. Uh, also, I, it wasn't just Thomas videos I did. I also did video game stuff back in the day. I actually almost did a full Let's Play of the Simpsons game. I got up to the army level of Homer and Vought. Sadly, though, I got rid of my camera years and years ago, so, yeah. But I, I still have it on a disc somewhere, so maybe I can put that on YouTube one day. But yeah, uh, that's something I really enjoy. I, I, I really, I just did it for fun, and I wanted to start YouTube, so I got a camera, and you know, just nowadays when I watch movies, like yesterday, I actually saw Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them too. Uh, the second movie, um... I'm, I'm, I'm giving away some stuff. Yesterday I saw the second movie of Fantastic Beasts, uh, The Crimes of, of Grindelwald, Grindelwald, however you say it. Uh, that, I really enjoyed the movie, and, uh, there's so many beautiful shots in that movie with the camera. Like, it was amazing. I loved it. Uh, just the Harry Potter movie, movies in general have great shots, and if I ever do you want to become a filmmaker in the future, which I kind of consider myself a filmmaker? I, I want to start doing really great shots like that in the future. So yeah, I, I do enjoy, uh, uh, that, that's why I became, uh, I should say I became, that's why I got into filming, because I just find it really cool. So yeah. Number five, do you hope to do this full time, or what would you do for a job? Well, this, if this could be a job, this is a job I would like to do. 
And would I want to do this for a job? Yes. This is a job I would really want to do. I love making videos. I love making people happy. And I have... It's something I really get inspired to do. And even if I do get a little... When I make videos, I love doing them. But at times I just want to take a break, get a little tired. Once in a while, I'll get a little lazy. So sometimes I'll take a break in that. But I always try to get videos out to my friends and family and uh, fans, uh, or just YouTube in general. So I always try to get at least a video or two per month, and I'm going to start doing that more in the future. So, uh, But yes, I would love to do this for a job. Uh, I have a really big passion for making videos, and I love doing videos. I love making people happy. I love coming up with stories. It's something I love doing, and it's something I cannot wait to do more in the future. Like I said, I have a lot of videos planned. There's a lot of movies I want to make and uh, stories I want to create and just some stuff I really want to do in the future. So, yes, I would love to do this for a job. And uh, it's something I hope I can do in the future for a job. So, yeah. With that said, everyone, thank you all so much uh, for asking me these questions. I had so much fun answering these. And... Uh, I hope to do this more in the future. I'm almost at 700 subscribers, and I don't know what's gonna be in the future. But I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try and do some big stuff. When 1,000 hits, I'll be doing something big. Don't know what it's gonna be, but I'm gonna do something big. Maybe another Q and A. Who knows? But if you do have questions you wanna ask me in the future, just let me know, and I'll answer them in the comments. And I just wanna take a moment to say thank you, all of you, for getting me where I am. I. I've met a lot of wonderful people, I've made some fantastic friends, and uh, thanks to all of you guys, I have made a lot of great videos, and I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for you guys. So, thank you all of you, all of you are wonderful, uh, all of you are amazing, thank you all so much, it means the world to me, it really does, and I can't wait to see what lies ahead in the future, I really can't. So. Yeah, big thanks to all of you. Thank you all so much. He means the world to me. He really does. With that said, everyone, I'm Stitch on the Ground. I review and I entertain you. See you all next time, and take care.